Kevin, you ready to do chores, buddy? Hey, right. where you going? Oh, yeah, we don't want to watch it. Well, welcome back to Caddy Wampus Acres, everybody. I'm Jason. Love having you, love seeing you. And uh, we have to go do our chores for the day. The goats are losing their mind. Uh, Kevin is accompanying me today, as you would expect. He's, uh, he's been with us for just over a week now, and man, he's doing great. Uh, I will say, Opal, you'll see in a second, um, Opal doesn't really like Kevin too much. So yeah, so let's go, uh, let's go take care of some chores. Morning. So what I'm saying about Opal not really liking Kevin is uh, Opal's our only girl in milk right now. And what we've noticed is, is when we bring Kevin out to do chores, uh, Opal will not come in the barn willingly. So she's a little bit scared, but also she does the same thing when uh, Steven, the barn cat, uh, when he uh, comes in the barn. So she's just weird, she's skittish. So what I've been doing actually lately, um, if you can see behind me here, we have some woods right here and our woods back there. And so what I've been doing, and I did yesterday, Kevin and I went for a little walk, and what I was planning on doing is just trying to figure out uh, how we're gonna fence in the property. So that is quite a conundrum. So what I'd love to hear from you is, if you've ever had to fence off a large section of your property, specifically wooded, um, how did you make your decisions? That's, that's really what I wanna know. Kevin, he's already got that uh, Pyrenees free spirit about him. Hey, we got a lot more chores to do, buddy. So check it out. The tarp is on the garden. If you saw our short, um, we actually had to cut this down from 40 by 100 to 70 by 25. And so we're doing the whole middle section with buffers on the edge to walk and run drip tape and stuff like that. Hey, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> We're gonna go over some great Pyrenees facts today. Um, when I do something, when I get into something, I learn everything I can about it. And um, I'd love to talk with y'all about why we chose to go with the great Pyrenees as our livestock guardian dog. Well, she's getting close to having babies. Jolene is close. I could tell by them bagging up. They're obviously wider, but, um, and Peyton is close too, because she doesn't give a lot of milk. We're probably going to sell her this year because she is, um, she makes really small babies and she doesn't give us a whole ton of milk. So she might have to find another family. Huh? But Tina's ready. She's ready. Don't be nice to him. And, Jolene is definitely close. I think Jolene's the closest, but we'll see. We shall see if we can get Opal to come in the milk barn since Kevin's out here. It's usually a big no. Opal. Just Opal. Just Opal. There she is. All right. Man, y'all, we're making huge progresses here. That is a huge deal. Y'all don't even realize she came in here even though she knew Kevin was in here. We're gonna get her milked out and then we're gonna talk about Great Pyrenees. All right, like that. All right, Kevin ran away. We gotta go find him. Huh, Kevin, there he is. I found him. Kevin, come on. Come on, little boy. Let's talk about Great Pyrenees. The Great Pyrenees, um, or they are sometimes called the Perean Mountain Dog. They originate from the Pyrenees Mountains or the Perean Mountains in France. They sort of separate France and Spain. That's right. And uh, were bred specifically to herd and watch over and guard sheep in the mountains. And so what would happen is, the shepherds would be out with the sheep in the morning working during the day and moving them and then at night when the shepherds would sleep the Pyrenees would guard all night long 
and that is why they are a nocturnal animal and we have found this out very very quickly they are very instinct driven he does sleep in the daytime and then he's more spun up at night and that is just instinctual because they are nocturnal like our barn cats and um, like a lot of predators are and so that's why they're awesome to watch out for predators i know isn't that right i have heard in france they call them the patou which i did uh take some french back in the day and if i'm pronouncing it wrong please uh correct me on that so the males in this breed like kevin here they can get up to 32 inches tall and like 160 pounds they are considered a giant dog breed which is even bigger than the large dog breeds like boxers and doberman and stuff like that so they he will become a giant animal um, i believe the females can get uh, about 30 inches tall and um, they uh, i think are usually coming in about 120 pounds 120 130 pounds so they are very large animals uh, why that is one of the reasons we were super excited to get kevin um, and we got him from Handmade Homestead. If you didn't watch our last video, make sure you check that out. And check out Handmade Homestead on Instagram. They do some amazing gardening and they are just really, really good people. The way you can tell a Pyrenees usually is by their big, white, fluffy coat. Um, and he will start shedding in the next couple months. And so this uh, loving on him that I'm doing right now uh, probably won't be able to happen as much in the next couple of months. Also, you can see their uh, triangular ears here. That is very normal of the Pyrenees. And then, uh, see, uh, can you look at his head? See how he sort of got like a upside down trapezoid head? That is very common for Pyrenees. And then, I don't know if y'all can tell, I have pretty big hands. This dude is got gigantic paws. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Typically, they will have double dew claws in the back uh, because they used to use those to sort of cr climb around in the mountains and grip things. And so their dew claws aren't just hanging there. Their dew claws are actually attached to the bone almost like a thumb. Pretty neat. Well, of course, we have to come in here in the greenhouse and show you how our growing's going. Here is our one vegetable grow. If you've been doing that with us, uh, this is our broccoli. Doesn't that thing look awesome? Look at this thing. Man, looks great. We've been fertilizing it with our AgriThrive. Uh, and if you want to uh, check this out, um, my buddy Travis over at Lazy Dog Farm, uh, you can actually get a code, I think, for a discount if you go to LazyDogFarm.com and check that out. Uh, let's see what else we got sprouting here. We got our Swiss chard. No Brussels sprouts. I think those seeds were dead, so nothing there. Kohlrabi, you got about half or so of those coming. Eh, probably two-thirds of those coming up. This is our spinach. I think this is Sun Angel. I don't remember what kind of spinach this is. Um, that's all germinating. A lot of our collards here have come up. This is the part I'm most excited about. Our sun sugar tomatoes, which, might I add, are the most delicious cherry tomatoes you will ever have in your entire life. You can get those. Uh, follow the link below to Haas Tools and pick yourself up some of these sun sugar cherry tomatoes. They're orange. They're so sweet, so good. Um, red snappers. Look at these things, y'all. Those things. My gosh. They already got their true leaves coming in. Pretty awesome. Time bomb peppers, those are coming up, and I gotta take you in real close here. If you can see that, the tobacco is uh, sprouting a little bit. And so we got a few tobacco plants coming up. Those are pretty delicate at first. So that's that. I see Kevin running around the greenhouse. That's distracting me a little bit. Um, let's check out our figs from Lazy Dog when we were down there with Travis in Brooklyn. Mary Lane seedless, looking good. We're keeping those in here until our ground temperature gets above 40 degrees all the time. The white Marseille, that's looking pretty good. Canadria, uh, Travis was bragging about these. We were on a Zoom call one day and Travis was bragging about these and he made me jealous by eating them. And then this Janari is looking really, really good. So I'm super excited for all those. Then down here, this is where we're the closest. And we're going to have to start fertilizing these seedlings soon. We have our Green Magic Broccoli, Candid Charm Cauliflower, our uh, Rio Grande um, Cabbage. This is Red Cabbage. This is Blue Ridge Kale. And then, and then just a couple of our Dwarf Blue 
uh, curl kale came up, which that was just sort of getting rid of those seeds anyways. But y'all look at these seedlings. They look awesome. Super excited about everything that's growing in the greenhouse. Make sure y'all follow us on all platforms because if you've only watched our long videos, you may not know that we post short videos uh, pretty much every single night, um, around eight-ish. I try, I try my best on all platforms. And you can, that's where we give these one minute little tips and little insights into our daily life. So make sure you follow us on uh, Instagram and Facebook and TikTok and YouTube and all these different things so you can keep up to date with everything we're doing here on the farm. And a big part of that is sharing these videos short and long with your friends who might be interested in this kind of stuff. A big important thing to remember about the Pyrenees is, is that they are um, very independent dogs. And so even after being very well trained, they will rarely have a very good recall because they are protecting you and the animals all the time even when you don't realize it and so if they perceive a threat it doesn't matter if you're calling them back they just think you're sort of stupid because you don't realize that you're in harm's way and they are going to protect you as you can tell by this wild vicious animal back here you may have even seen some stories recently where uh one pyrenees took down eight coyotes i saw a, a video recently where a pyrenees by himself was backing up a full-size grizzly bear somewhere in north america crazy y'all these things are super protective but they are also very very gentle and they when they grow up with animals and people those are their people, those are their animals, that is their herd, and they are going to protect them at whatever cost it takes. I've been told that their lifespan is around uh, 10 to 12 to 14 years. Um, we really hope that Kevin lives a super long life um, because we already, just after the past week, I love this guy. He is super sweet, super awesome, super goofy. I've never really spent a lot of time training a dog. Uh, I'm going to do some training with him, uh, some basic stuff, and I've gotten some comments like, you can't train a livestock guardian dog. They're just instinctually driven, it doesn't. Listen, I can train him to sit, to stay. Um, I can train him to come. I can train him on these things. His recall might not be great, but you can train all dogs on a few commands. That's really all we're trying to do. Okay, but uh, we are just gonna get some basic commands for when we do have the back area fenced in and we need Kevin to maybe do something to control himself maybe a little bit if somebody comes over. Uh, he is eating the heck out of these wild onions. So one weekend, what are our thoughts on raising a livestock guardian dog? So far, awesome. We love Kevin. Uh, we're looking forward to many, many, many more years um, spending with him and um, him growing with our herd and our flock and protecting our animals. We know he's going to do a great, great job just based off his instincts. And um, these dogs are very, very much set up for that kind of thing. And if you are thinking about getting a Great Pyrenees, uh, we would encourage it so far. Uh, we haven't had any issues. Just know that they do bark a lot, a lot, a lot at night. They are very independent um, and they are a gigantic dog breed. Um, so think about that if you're thinking about getting a house pet, because we do have several friends who have them just inside the house. Um, they shed a lot. All these things need to be taken into account. But if you're thinking about guarding your livestock or your animals, your chickens, your pigs your donkeys your anything whatever you're trying to raise um, we would encourage that because they are great at that just remember you have to be able to secure them so they don't run away because they want to protect you all day that is our talk about livestock guardian dogs thank you so much for joining us again here at cattywampus acres homestead home fed we'll see you guys next time